If you're new to ESA font technology and you've never seen true object-based lettering, you're going to want to stay tuned and watch this. And if you have started to play with ESA fonts and you're a little confused about all the differences, then this is also a video just for you. Recently we released a ESA font bundle that included the same font but done four different ways. There was a regular font, there was a two color font, there was a flexi-fill font, and there was an applique font. And in one of our groups somebody asked how come there's four different files? Aren't the ESA font supposed to be object based and you can do whatever you want with them? Well the answer is yes they are object based and you can kind of do whatever you want with them but it's a matter of how much time do you want to spend. So I'll explain each one of these and hopefully fill in the blanks. So you can do anything with an ESA file but keep in mind that they are digitized manually to create the file and any font is only as good as the person who digitized it and when you do digitize it specifically for a certain you know technique or for a certain style you're always going to get better results now the first thing I want you to remember is that every font is digitized at a smallest size, at a base size, and that means that you can enlarge it from that size, but going smaller definitely gets into gray areas and you might start to have problems because every font is different with regards to the stroke weight of it, how it's laid out, and that's why just taking a true type font and converting it can sometimes give you problems. To manually digitize a font, a digitizer who knows what they're doing will go in and make adjustments to the artwork to make sure you get the best results and that's one of the reasons why when we create all of our ESA files I always put a measurement after the name of the file and it might be 20 millimeters 25 millimeters 8 millimeters 6 millimeters we can make some really really small lettering but it has to be I guess friendly for that size in the first place you can always go up from there but going down from there can usually run into problems now the other thing that you have to remember is that you will sometimes have to edit files afterwards if you take a six millimeter font which is really tiny and make it like eight inches high you're going to have to adjust some of the uh, you know I guess the dancing baseline because you do have to adjust for push and pull compensation within objects that are embroidered and that means that if you're digitizing something at a small size you're allowing for a certain amount of push at the top and the bottom of the open ends of an eye and as you increase that those will increase with regards to the spacing so sometimes you do have to modify and that all comes down to knowing how to digitize professionally now now, this is why ESA fonts are really an advantage because they are object based. They do dis, uh, actually, you know, I guess redigitize themselves very well, and you can actually change all types of things within them, but you still need a foundation or a basic knowledge of embroidery and stitch types to make them work effectively. So, my first example here, which is the a regular font this was actually digitized at 20 millimeters so that's the actual size of the design at 20 millimeters and I know that it will run well at 20 millimeters and this also if I zoom into it you can see how it changes the directions there's actually different objects if I take this one letter and I break it apart within the software you'll see that it's actually three objects that make up that one letter and you know the letter I will only have one object and other letters might have more so that is something you have to take into effect when I'm talking about the next letter this is actually done at 40 millimeters you couldn't take a 20 millimeter font and do a two color font because the width of the stitch uh, that is right here and let's turn the true view on the width of the satin stitch that's going around this object is going to be way too small so I have to make sure I have enough of a width of a stitch to make it work so to get the best results for that letter I did actually digitize it completely from scratch I could have taken the first letter grabbed all three of these objects grouped them together and combined them which would give them one object and one stitch direction and then I could take that and I could copy it and I could convert it to outlines and I could tweak everything make sure it looked fairly good and 
cross my fingers and hope for the best. Now, that would take you a long time to edit every single layout, and this is just sort of a time-saving thing for you. Same thing goes for the next one. For a FlexiFill, I thought that 50 millimeters would be the minimum that I'd want it to be used at, and because it is a FlexiFill, I can now take that object, break it apart, and when I do duplicate it, and I can have multiple objects, and I can now assign different stitch types. So if I want to do a you know back stitch on that, I can do it as a back stitch. And if I want to take that and turn it into a regular fill, or if I want to turn it into a motif, I have the ab uh, availability to literally just click the items and change them. And you could again do that with the original font, but by the time you resize it, tweak all the lines, make sure that everything is perfect based on how large it would be, you know, regenerated at, you wouldn't necessarily get perfect results just at a click of a button. You'd have to go in and spend quite a bit of time to edit it. The last one, which is the applique file, this you can see generally has a uh, tack down stitch so it gives me my outline my tack down stitch and then it does all of the finishing stitches around the outside of that design and I will get a perfect applicant again I felt that 50 millimeters would have been the minimum size that I'd want to do an applique for that specific font so in reality you don't need to purchase all four ESA files of that you know same font but if you want quickness, speed, and quality, I've basically saved a ton of the work for you because I digitized it manually specifically for those purposes. Now it's no secret that Wilcom is the go-to software for the commercial industry and one of the main reasons is specifically because of the ESA font technology. Now we've digitized almost 800 ESA files that you can load directly into the software and these include regular fonts, two color fonts, uh, 3D fonts, applique fonts, flexi fills, flexi shapes, we have quilting glyphs and all kinds of other designs or glyphs which are basically designs that have been assigned to Keystroke and we sell them for $10 a piece or less if you buy them in, in a bundle or a group. So I gotta be honest with you, by the time you spent hours and hours digitizing a font by hand and then having to do it over and over again, this really is the most cost effective way and you're guaranteed good results. Thanks for watching. If you wanna make your embroidery life easier, be sure to hit the subscribe button below to be notified of new tips and tricks videos, giveaways, and more. Plus, if you want to try Hatch Embroidery software free for 30 days, or you already own Hatch and you'd like to download a free ESA font for it, click one of the links in the description below to learn more now. The next step of your embroidery legacy starts here with ours.